It's about 23,000 nautical miles and it's quite a feat because you cannot stop for any more supplies. You've got all your own food, water, medical supplies, safety gear, everything. Yeah, so uh, I've just been keeping busy with uh, tons of little stuff, keeping the boat happy, keeping me happy. The plan was that I'd be writing blogs, ideally daily, as well as video blogging when possible, so people could follow along and be part of the journey as well. Pretty cool. She checked in twice a day uh, on the satellite phone, so usually a morning and night. Oh, it's my uh, first time crossing the equator, so uh, it's traditional to have a, a dump in the salt water as you go across. Here it goes. Sometimes I could set the boat up and she'd sail. Which was when there was no wind, ironically enough. Here we go, we've got Cape Horn just uh, poking out through the clouds. Uh, it looks absolutely amazing. Cape Horn was, you know, they, they call it the Everest of sailing. If she could get around Cape Horn, she, she could get around the world. Well, how about this? I'm done. I'm uh, around Cape Horn. Cessna with mum and dad in here. We're only a few minutes away from you, so you should be able to see us very soon. Oh, yeah, OK. I'll uh, come up and uh, see if I can spot you over. Oh, no. <laughs> mum and dad were able to fly over out from Cape Horn, which was, which was awesome. There she is. <laughs> here they go again, nice and close. Wow, you can hear the engines. <laughs> It was all and everything that I ever thought it was because it really impressed upon you how small that boat is in that bloody huge ocean. Bye, Jessie. Love your heaps. Love you, Dad. Love you. Love you. Love you. Love you. See you, darling. After Cape Horn, it was into the South Atlantic Ocean where we struck a really nasty storm. This was the one that was really dangerous. The waves were between 70 and 100 foot and pretty soon Jess had experienced five knockdowns. A knockdown is when the mast uh, goes beyond the horizontal and into the water. The rogue wave picked up the whole boat and knocked it well underwater. Never forget when the EPIRB went off. It's the emergency beacon when it goes off. It means that the boat's at least three metres underwater. And we had no contact with Jessica for a period of time. And everybody was like completely speechless. It was so stressful. Like, there's just no way she would have set off an EPIRB unless she thought that was the end, you know. And I just thought, this is the end. It was a period, a couple of hours maybe, where I was contemplating whether whether this was it. I think she's the only one that will ever know how bad those five hours were during that storm. I really like to just go to sleep for like eight hours instead of half an hour or an hour until the next alarm wakes me up and there it goes now. See, yeah, I didn't even get five minutes. By the time Jess was sailing back into Australian waters, I think that's when her fame really started to build. Wow, this thing is going to be huge. God, I'm going to miss it so much out here. It's just so beautiful and it's so simple. It's just... Mm, lovely. From Sydney to Sydney via the world, the teenage girl in her little pink boat has made it. She'd sailed almost 24,000 miles for seven months, across some of the most treacherous oceans on the planet, sailing back into Sydney to an incredible homecoming. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome Jessica Watson home. Jessica was only 16, three days before her 17th birthday. She did what she promised to do. Her life has changed forever by her achievement. 
I don't think people realise how overwhelming it was because after a long period away from land, everything feels close and the sensations and the smells and the, the noises and the colours, all of these things are really, really vivid and overwhelming. <laughs> When she stepped off the boat, it was just, you've made it. <laughs> yeah, you've made it, yeah. Yes, in the eyes of all Australians, you now stand tall as our newest Australian hero. I'm actually going to disagree with what our Prime Minister has just said. I don't consider... <laughs> I consider myself a hero. I'm an ordinary girl who believed in her dream. You don't have to be someone special or anything special to achieve something amazing. You've just got to have a dream, believe in it and work hard.